Okay, question three. It says the magnetic flux through the loop in the accompanying figure varies with the time according to this expression here. Okay, it's good to know. Um, somewhat complicated function of time t, which is good because we are going to be taking derivatives likely, not integral, um, where they give the numerical value for this coefficient. Uh, even though, yeah, 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 okay. And they give you the numerical value for this coefficient and they give you numerical value for omega, okay. Oh, you know, this looks like um, uh, exponentially decaying or kind of damped oscillation, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the magnetic field itself might be produced by something that's oscillating uh, with oscillation damping out over time, maybe. Um, so it asks, what are the direction and magnitude of the current through the 5 ohm register at time equals zero, time equals this thing, and time equals three seconds? All right, I think those three numbers are significant, so I better do all three. So, oh, I gotta know the what the choices are. I think it. Uh, so flowing up or down, we, and we need to associate that with a clockwise or counterclockwise. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So uh, yeah. So this uh, has you to the um, diff more challenging part of Faraday's law, because as I was saying in the other question, um, figuring out the voltage itself that's easy, because when you write down Faraday's law, e dot dl is equal to minus time derivative of the magnetic flux, then um, the left-hand side is the voltage. But now what's challenging is that um, uh, the sign is not necessarily intuitive to figure out from this expression. Even though this is complete expression with this minus sign, mathematically everything should work out, but it's not intuitive. That's why we give this minus sign its own separate name called Lenz's law. So we can use uh, Lenz is a name. We can use Lenz's law to try to figure out the direction that uh, induced the current flow has to be. So this is where it helps to have some sense of what direction the change of magnetic flux is. So let me just sketch out this uh, magnetic um, flux a little bit. So it's going to be a function of time. I'm sketching out magnetic flux. It starts out from, oh, because of sine of omega t, I think it starts out from zero. And over time, it's going to reach some value that will be close to this phi naught. So because it's a sine, a sine function, starts out with a zero at time equals zero, goes up like this, and then it does this thing. Okay, so um, at the beginning, at time equals zero, the slope is upward. So magnetic field is magnetic flux is pointing, starting to point out of screen, and it's uh, increasing in that direction. So as so that's the important part here. For a, my change of magnetic flux is coming out of screen because it's in that direction increasing. Yeah, I think that, I, I hope these symbols are meant to define what the positive direction is. So with that, um, we can figure out what the direction of induced current is. If your um, change in the magnetic flux is pointing out of the screen, then the direction of induced current has to be such that, that the direction of the induced, uh, direction of magnetic field due to the induced current has to oppose that change. So this is the direction of the magnetic field that will be produced by the loop. So, um, so using one of the shortcut rules, my thumb is in the direction of magnetic field, the way my fingers curl will be the direction of the current. So the current has to be going clockwise at time equals zero. So with the current going clockwise, then you follow this direction of current, follow it, and here it should be flowing downward. 
So at time equals zero, current will be flowing uh, downward. And oh, for the magnitude, okay, I do have to work this out. So, um, oh, I guess, yeah, I don't need any geometry. This is give me the flux directly. So here the, um, the answer will be something that has, to, well, answer will be just d v b d t. Uh, let me do this in sage man. I think I can just <laughs> cut out a lot of uh, menial work if I just use sage math for this. So uh, let me let that load up. Now while it's doing that, let's just figure out all the other um, directions. So I guess um, so alpha being 1.5 inverse a second. Um, so for uh, part B, at this short of a time, I can ignore the exponential. So what I need to figure out is if this is uh, which part of the cycle it is. So if omega, which is two pi times frequency, so um, here the frequency is a sixty hertz. So um, I need a <laughs> reciprocal of that to figure out in which part of the cycle uh, that is in. Um, so one over two point one seven e minus two. So um, I mean I can't. I can't do this in my head. One over sixty hertz. That'll give tell me what my period is. So my period here is about um, zero point zero one six seven zero point zero one six seven second. So this time. You know, let me do this in an easier way. <laughs> Instead of trying to figure out all this stuff, uh, what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to do the math. So um, so by this is what I mean by do the math. So I have said for A, current is in the downward direction, and this is going to be the well absolute value of the time derivative at that time t equals 0. So parts B and C. I'm just going to compute what the time derivative is, d v b over d t. I'll do that here as well. And what I'm going to do is if I get a minus sign here, for example, then what that means for the direction will be it will be flipped. Um, so uh, so if I get a so this is what it would mean for the first part of the answers, if I get a positive sign here, that means the direction of the current is downward. That's what I'm going to associate with the positive time derivative. And with the minus sign here, what that would mean is that the current is upward, the opposite of the positive direction. That'll help to save a lot of <laughs> manual or menial work. <laughs> so let me do it that way. Um, so. I need to declare some variables. Um, I need a phi naught, uh, alpha. Uh, Euler's number is already in there. Oh, I think I need a t and I need omega. I um, think everything else is in there. So uh, I need a, a dictionary of the values that I'm going to be plugging in. That would be phi naught is uh, 4.5 times 10 to the power of minus three in SI units, Tesla times meter squared, and alpha is um, 1.5 inverse second in unit of, in basic SI units, and omega is um, 120 times uh, pi. Yeah, I think that's pi. Okay, um, so I need the, the, the um, I need the function or equation. Uh, my function is going to be phi naught times exponential of a minus alpha times t um, times the sine of omega times t. I think all of that is fine. Yeah. Okay. So I can take the first derivative. I think f dot diff will work. 
also. Yeah, okay, that worked. All right. Um, so let me plug in my expression. So the time derivative, <laughs> and I'm going to substitute in my rule that I built up. Now, this will still be a function of time, uh, as you can see. So I need to plug in time, uh, substitute in t equals zero. Oh, and you know, put it through my uh, decimal approximator. That's what this n function is. Uh, so we did that. My answer is 1.696. Uh, um, oh, we made <laughs> 1.696, that'll give me the um, quantity that's here, here, which is the voltage. It's the voltage across the, um, across the, the register. That's what I'm calculating right now. But the question wants me to answer in um, current values um, in milliampere. So it should be this derivative divided by the resistance. This thing divided by resistance. This thing divided by the resistance. So I have the resistance of R. Um, R is equal to five ohm. So let me just take that and divide it by five. So, okay, 0.339, and this should have been basic SI units, ampere. So in milliampere, so it should be 339 milliampere. So let's check and make sure that that gives me the correct answer. And um, once I have that, 339, um, then I'll just do the next two relatively easily. Assuming, yeah, good. <laughs> These two are correct. Um, then the rest is just uh, plugging in different numbers. That's uh, kind of why this is nice. Um, oh, wait, might as well do it here. So my plug in, um, the time that I'm plugging in, is 2.17 times 10 to the power of minus two. Ah, I get a negative sign. So it must be somewhere along this cycle here in the downward slope. So uh, so the magnitude is 0 0.107 or 107 milliampere. And the direction of current will now be flipped. It'll flow up instead of down. Good. And let me do part C, um, same deal, the same expression, just different numbers. Um, the time T is equal to three seconds. Um, yeah, there's still noticeable flow. So it's a smaller because we've had a two time constant worth of decay, but um, it doesn't go to zero in two time constant. It should be longer. So it's gonna be uh, 3.77 milliampere. 3.77 milliampere, and the answer was positive, so it'll be in our positive direction or flowing down. So that's it. It's quite simple, um, at least <laughs> once you get to using a computer algebra system for the derivative. Otherwise, you know, derivative of something like this, it can get complicated. You have to use product rule, and it can be very time consuming, which is why I didn't do it by hand. Um, um, and, uh, you know, really, when, we, when it comes to circuit stuff, I really do, uh, which this is almost halfway, yeah? I do encourage you to just uh, use computer algebra system. With the circuit stuff, um, really the most important part is being able to set up the equations, having some conceptual understanding of the thing, and the actual calculation, let the computer do 